Okay, a couple of months ago, I was asked to put together a T-scan data interpretation along with an ortho uh, case just to kind of share what my thought process is and how I use T-scan in my office. So what we're going to do today is I'm just going to take you through how I go through uh, my data collection and um, what I share with the patient. So we're going to go over an ortho case. This is Edward not his real name. A little background on Edward. He's 17. He just left the, the pedodonic office. He's establishing care with our office. And my hygienist has her own Novus handpiece. So every new patient that comes into the office gets screened. This is what he looks like clinically. And so now I'm going to share with you the T-scan data. So we do three bytes in MIP or maximum intercuspation and this is our data layout. Right off the bat what sticks out to me is we have a quarter of his bite is on tooth number three and thirty and then a quarter of his bite is on nineteen and fourteen. So it is true this is probably the most um, intuitive portion of T-scan data for dentists and um, this is a 3D version of the same 2D um, 2D rendering over here. So the height of the pixels tell us something about force as do the colors. Um, low is down here in the blue and then high in the orange to red and then pink is so high. Uh, the machine, It's an unknown quantity. The machine can't read the data right, right? So the big things are yes we do want a balance of 50-50 right and left but we also want to make sure that when he functions that the cusps are out of the way in the back. And so I don't know that if, um, I don't know that I would call this a stable occlusion based on, on what I'm seeing, uh, just because I have the, the clinical ramifications of leaving this the way it is. I'm going to share those pictures with you in just a couple of minutes, but, um, he is having some recession and he wants the recession addressed. So knee jerk reaction is you just brushing too hard and go to a soft bristle, use the modified bass technique, you know, kind of the things that I learned when I was in dental school. Let's look at a right excursive movement. So um, he is going to move to the right and we would expect the back teeth to disengage and the anterior teeth to engage um, most likely we would like the canines to do that and um, he doesn't have that so I've broken this up into quadrant view so each one of these colors represents a quadrant up here and basically he's discluding off of his two molars to the right and we can see as he you know um, shifts to the right uh, tooth number three has the higher amount of force although I suspect this has been going on from some time if if he had um, his braces got taken off when he was uh, in tenth grade, and now he is um, he is in college, so it's just a matter of time before this wears down, and this one starts taking um, starts taking the brunt of the force. Or if the tooth's not wearing down, uh, the bone and the gums will take the brunt of the force. So. How do we correct this? Well, you use the computer to help guide where the interferences are. Okay, this looks looks really uh, the palatal cusp of two or one of the lingual cusps of 31. So mid-treatment, what you'll notice when we go into an excursive movement right here is the canine takes over, red quadrant takes over, goes up, all the other quadrants all the other colors go down. And so why is this important to get a handle on? As I've already stated, uh, Edward is aware that he's got some concerns with recession. So I flipped image 14 so you could see 14 compared to 3. And I guess he could be brushing too hard, but if that's the case, we're really not brushing, what, too... 13, 15 was a little out of focus, it's okay, but um, these two tend to be the ones that are showing the greatest amount of recession. So again, right around here is where we would expect our, 
our gum tissue to be, maybe even a little farther up past the CEJ. And 14 is not as bad. So I hope this sheds a little light on how I'm using T-Scan to share the patient's information with them and take ownership of their own problems. If you are interested in learning more about T-Scan or how T-Scan be, can be implemented into your office, these are two dates, although I'm not sure um, the Michigan course is going to happen. Uh, it may happen in July. October is still solid uh, if you want to come down and learn with us. Um, I also do in-office training. And you can reach out to me on Facebook Messenger is probably the easiest way to get in touch with me. Or you can just call the office.